The EU is currently in the midst of a big push to create policies that strengthen the role of universities in academic spin-offs in innovation and growth. Research centers and universities are facing global competition, not just from the U.S., which has a long tradition of academic entrepreneurship, but also from emerging research hotspots in China, India, and other parts of the world. Though significant research has been devoted to analyzing academic spin-offs, the processes governing their formation and success are still not well understood. University spin-off formation rate is often seen as a key indicator of the quality of the industry science links in a country or region. Because of this, there is an enormous demand for young professionals who understand the role of technology transfer offices, patents, and intellectual property, and that are able to transform an idea or innovation into a profitable company. This is one of the reasons why we developed the Barcelona GSC Master in the Economics of Science and Innovation, to teach students with engineering, business, economics, and science backgrounds the economic applications of emerging technologies. While our research investigates the best framework for launching spin-offs, our students are the ones with the knowledge to implement it. Barcelona GSE affiliated professors and UAB professors Ines Macho Stadler and David Pérez Castrillo, together with Reinhilde Vergles of Catholic University of Leuven, have researched the optimal model for designing contracts for university spin-offs. A successful spin-off begins with the development of an innovative new technology at a university or research center and leads to the creation of a new technology company that profitably enters the market. University inventions are usually at embryonic stage. They may need the spin-off companies to transform the invention into commercial products or services. The origin of uh, successful businesses such as uh, Google, Lycos or Genentech were found on the minds and the labs of university researchers. But to have these remarkably performing companies, many spin-offs have to be run. Uh, for example, between uh, 1980 and 1986, only 18 of all spin-offs from MIT went public, and this is much, much higher rate of success than the average firm. We want to get a clear idea of what makes a spin-off more likely to succeed. The researchers used a combination of empirical analysis and case studies to develop a theoretical model for designing academic spin-off contracts between the university technology transfer offices, the researcher, and the venture capitalist. We look in particular at the case of Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium to demonstrate how technology transfer offices can aid in creating successful spin-offs. The university has successfully created 70 spin-off companies that have generated a turnover of 400 million euros and employ more than 2,000 people. Looking further into the case of Leuven, we determined that perhaps the most significant factor explaining its success in creating spin-offs was implementing an incentive system based on budgetary flexibility and financial autonomy. Based in our analysis, it seems that the optimal contract allocates funders shares to the researcher to secure her participation in the venture. The allocation of financial shares may be the only way to make sure that she really has the incentive to put effort into the venture. In other words, the best way to motivate the researcher is to give them a stake in the success of their idea in the marketplace. Similarly, the best way for the university to convince the venture capitalists to become involved is to share the destiny of the new venture. Universities transfer scientific know-how and their own research knowledge into teaching at the undergrad and especially at graduate level. Also, they transfer technological breakthroughs and innovations to the market. The optimal way of doing this is one of the hottest questions for policymakers right now. What David, Renilde and I have shown is that the two main determinants of whether the spin-off thrives in the market or dives in the vine is whether sufficient stakes are allocated to the researcher and whether the university transfer office has the right skills and enough flexibility to actively participate in the venture.